Hello, we play viewers. I'm taking an early boat in from Star Island. I could use a little bit extra uh, rest this afternoon. And all these people think they're looking at a dolphin, but it's submerged. So, so much for excitement. There's a tug going out. I hope the wind noise isn't too bad. Hi, Divine. I'm on my, uh, on my headsets. So hopefully the microphone is, is doing a good job. I was inside until just a second ago. Sheltering from this uh, sort of poor weather. Hi, Karen. Karen, do I have good audio? Yep, thank you, Divine. We haven't had uh, we haven't had very many nice days, and this morning was one of the nicer mornings. And then, about 60 minutes after that uh, scope, it rained. Windy. Okay. So lots of wind noise. We're slowing down. Slowing down for a little wave action. Some of these people have been standing out for for a good portion of the trip. But then they had enough and, and came inside. Now they're out to, uh, to see the view a little bit. This is a short scope. Our destination is on the other side of that bridge up ahead. So I've just been inside uh, resting a little bit. This, uh, this red thing with the white stripe is a range marker that ships will use when they're, when they're coming in. This is a very deep uh, river. So ships don't have too much excitement as they uh, go upstream until they get to the narrow section. And then they get through this bridge and have to make a sharp turn and have to go through another bridge. And that's where uh, the smart sea captains will have their anchor mostly lowered in case of emergency. If they lose steering or the engine has some issue, they can lower the anchor a little more and uh, maybe prevent, uh, prevent a collision. No, this is not the Merrimack River. This is the Piscataqua River in New Hampshire. Uh, I have to be a little careful here because I'm on the extreme edge of the stake and these cranes and whatnot are in the state of Maine. So I'm somewhere in New Hampshire and almost in Maine. Uh, over here on the left is, is Portsmouth. And that's our destination. We'll go underneath this bridge. It doesn't have to open for this boat. It's a tight fit. But uh, we can make it under even at high tide, and it's almost uh, close, very close to high tide right now. And we'll go through the bridge, past the salt pile, and then be docked. So I'm looking forward to a couple of days of, of rest. It uh, hasn't been extremely strenuous working at Star Island, but, but there's been a huge amount of walking. And I haven't done, uh, done much walking being on a, on a sailboat just sort of uh, monitoring my progress when I was coming up the coast. So I always view the view back. See the coast, there's a Coast Guard base here. But actually it's the, uh, the Naval Shipyard where in the World War II they'd knock out submarines and they'd come out those, uh, come out those hatches down the ramp. And so now this uh, naval shipyard is a refurbishment center for submarines. And I'm looking and I'm looking and I don't think there's one here. There might be one around the corner. The, uh, the fact that a tugboat just was uh, going out means it's going to be meeting something and uh, probably helping to bring it in. There's a, a port for ships. They unload gypsum uh, much a little farther upstream than where we're tying up. And some people that work at Star in the summer work at the, the shipping port operating a crane. It takes about a week to unload one of those ships. So they, uh, they have people on 12 hour, 12 hour shifts, which seems, uh, seems like a really long day. Yep, 
there is a submarine in port. I was hoping to uh, to get a little view around the around the point here. You can see it's uh, barricaded off, so you don't get too close. But you can just see a little bit of it right there, and they have a uh, bit of white white plastic covering something up, and a lot of steam coming out of that. So who knows what's going on? Some kind of maintenance. So there you go. How often do you see a, a submarine in a, in a live periscope? It's a little unusual for them to, uh, to come and go. Very, very uh, sporadic. Oh, well, I've been okay. I've been busy this week, so I'm a little worn out. I'm looking forward to a, a couple of nights in my own bed, eating my own food. Oh, thank you, Divine. They are, my periscopes are a bit unique. All right, let's get over to where I was standing before because here we come to the bridge and it's high tide, so we've got a bit of a thrill. It looks like we're going to hit, but we barely make it. I will show you something funny in a second. The reason this antenna is at a slant is so it can go under the bridge and not hit. We barely missed. There's a little marina up here on the right. I don't know. I don't know many of them. There's a lot of current in this river. It's really very strong. And I wouldn't want to keep a sailboat up here. It's a it's a long trip out or in if the current's not in your favor. And these these <laughs> lift bridges only open in the summer on our schedule. So if you're uh, not right on time, you have to maintain your position with the current against the current. This bridge over here, we just went under a new bridge, and this bridge is also a new bridge. It was hit by a ship, and it was already scheduled for uh, replacement. So it got got fixed up and then replaced, almost uh, almost uh, like within months of each other. So over here on the left. covered up now is a huge pile of salt. They use that in the winter time on the roads. And up here in front of us is, I guess it looks like gypsum. Then there's a man here asking me what I'm doing and I'm explaining to him that I'm doing a live video. So he thought I was talking to him. <laughs> but no, I'm talking to my audience. This is our, uh, our destination. The, uh, the ferries docked here. The Challenger runs, runs uh, in the summertime quite a lot. I need to make sure I'm not standing in the way of, uh, of docking. The current in here is very tricky. It comes around, uh, it comes, comes around that point and there's a little bit of a, a swirling action. So when you're landing a boat here, you have to anticipate what the current's going to be doing. Sometimes this boat docks on the inside, which is even trickier because you have to go through this uh, gap. And at low tide, it's a scary looking proposition. Looks like there's someone, uh, Connor's coming down to, to help us with the lines. So this is a nice scope, it stopped raining finally, it's still pretty cold.
but we were on we got the little ones so we could sit on the benches all the way around. Right. Yeah, the spring that wasn't, exactly. So, we've arrived, I'm going to scope out while Jack's doing his final, final maneuvering. And catch you next time. Thanks everybody for checking in.